it is Wednesday, April 19th, 2017. It's kind of an historic day. <laughs> I've been reading about it all over social media. You know, in our in what we do, we, we talk about unicorns quite a bit, right? Right, Ben? <laughs> we do. Unicorns, earth ponies, mm -hmm. pegasi, yep. alicorns. Earth ponies. Well, Starbucks today and for I think only for like two or three days after this. They've is, made a they've made a frappe just for us. A unicorn <laughs> frappuccino. Yeah. I've been reading all about it on Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, believe it or not, me and Ben are in a small town. That's not the hard part to believe. But believe it or not, the small town doesn't have a single Starbucks in it. No. Not even like a little Starbucks, you know, in the corner on Main Street or anything. No. So we are here in Auburn, Maine because Ben just had her workout class. Yeah. And what better way to celebrate the end of workout <laughs> class than by getting a cup of pure sugar. <laughs> We couldn't let the unicorn frappuccino go without us taste testing it, guys. Am I right? That's right. So, let's give it a try. We're only going to get one because this yeah. thing looks insanely sweet. It does. It's and supposed to be like yeah. a combination of mango and like sour blue raspberry. And then when you stir it, it turns from blue and purple to like pink, I believe. Yeah, I think so that's the way it's supposed to go. It would be funny if we go there and they talk to Ben like she's a crazy person ordering a unicorn frappuccino. They have got to have a ginormous, <laughs> like, limited edition, three days only, or however many days only. Are, are you gonna, like, uh, like ease your way into it? Like, um, do you have the unicorn frappuccino, or are you just gonna go for it? I'm just gonna go for it. I mean, it's not like they don't know what it is. <laughs> That's probably right with you. Moment of truth, here we go. Do you feel foolish? Yes. Thank you for reading. What can I get for you today? Hi, can I have a small unicorn frappuccino? Sure. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, we'll see you at the window. At least they knew what you were talking about. That's true. There wasn't like the blank, yeah. uncomfortable. Like, uh, <laughs> uh. That's the way it is. Anytime there's like one of these limited edition things, you're always in the back of your head like, they're not going to have it, or they're going to think you're a crazy person. Because we live in a small town. And to make matters worse, it's called a unicorn frappuccino. <laughs> sure. They may call the police if they didn't know what it was. Am I allowed to be <laughs> drinking this in a Starbucks line? <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> you're drinking a Dunkin' Donuts in a Cumberland Farms uh, <laughs> cup cozy. I don't stick by any. <laughs> Ben's a rebel. <laughs> ben just realized her nails are going to match this frappuccino. <laughs> There it is, the unicorn frappuccino. You can see the little blue stripe in there. That is one one brightly colored drink right there. <laughs> and it's got the pink powder on the top. Oh, and you can kind of see how it's turning pink around the blue. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Tegan wants to know what is the fuss about this thing right here. Yeah, you can't have the first sip. <laughs> Hey, Ben. Okay. Don't worry, Tegan. You can have your sip in a minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you have a sip, buddy. Promise. Okay. 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 You ready for this? I'm ready. Yeah. Limited edition Unicorn Frappuccino 2017. Alrighty. Not bad. It definitely, you could definitely taste. Is that like the sour blue raspberry yeah, there? And yeah. the rest is sort of like that mango -y? Yeah. I don't taste any sour. Let's try to get the whole experience here. It's not bad, actually. It's not bad. I mean, it's a dessert drink for sure. You want to try it, buddy? Yeah. Okay, Tegan is trying this before me. He really me. wants to try it. Okay. What is your opinion? He is going to town. What do you think? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, buddy. Not bad. Yeah, well, bye. There's some pink sparkles on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know he's gonna be bouncing off the walls this afternoon. You gonna give daddy a sip? <laughs> Save some for daddy. Okay, all right, my turn. Everyone else has tried some. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Here we go. You know, that is not bad. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not something you'd want to drink every day. No, no. Sure. 
Not bad, Starbucks. Well played. That, that actually is pretty tasty. Yeah. And Tegan wants more. <laughs> I probably do not want to know the nutritional information no. <laughs> about this drink. Probably that's why, not. That's why we only got one to split between three of us. And yeah. probably not even going to finish that. No, probably not. So there you go. Our Bin Stoy Bin Taste Test. Not of, bad. <laughs> of the Unicorn Frappuccino. Out of, out of five frappuccinos instead of five star. unicorns five unicorns uh, yeah okay out of five <laughs> unicorns five being the best one being the worst how would you rate the unicorn frappuccino three and a half unicorns 3.5 unicorn yeah i think we're on the same page mm. there we go so if you happen to see this in the next 48 hours or so give it a shot the, the blue the blue sauce or whatever is in there definitely not as sour as I was expecting, you know, reading the reviews online. I was like almost expecting like liquefied like warhead or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I granted I haven't like sucked like a whole glop of it through the straw or anything. Right. But yeah, it's a very, very pleasing, very sweet drink. Mm -hmm. But not like excessively. I, I, but like I said, not something you want to drink every day. Mm -hmm. John's going to be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> and Tegan's going to be bouncing off the walls. You're, I don't see they're going... <laughs> so you know how I said earlier that it wasn't really that sour. We've been it's been sitting here in the car for a few minutes on our way home and I took another sip. And the longer it sits, I can definitely feel the sour on my tongue. Yeah. Like it's not an overpowering sour, but it gets a lot more sour as you as it melts and mixes together. Tegan's back from Grammy and Grampy's, and Ben and I had a very productive afternoon recording. Oh man, at least three or four videos mm -hmm. for the next few days. And this actually came yesterday, but I thought I'd hold off and do an unboxing today. It's my D23 membership kit for this year. And it will include my new gold member card. I've been a charter member. I've been a member since the beginning. So here is my new gold card. Still the same design as the past few years, Ben. Check it out. Oh, nice. They kind of go a few years with the same design. Yeah. Here's the exclusive gift for this year. It says Walt Disney's Nine Old Men. Hey, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's see what's in here. Ooh, check this out. Oh. It's like last year when we had the treasures from Walt's death. The Nine Old Men were the nickname for Disney's animator. So who's on that paper? This is a Mickey Mouse animation drawing by Les Clark, circa 1937. Obviously recreations, they're not sending you stuff from the archives. This is a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves premiere pass, a recreation from 1937. Cathay Circle, oh, sorry, Carthay Circle. We ate at a restaurant at California Adventure, which was a recreation of that theater, where yeah. Snow White had its premiere. Okay, next up, it's Dopey. Dopey. This is Dopey, Dopey fan card, Dopey circa 1937, card. drawn by Ollie Johnston. This irresistible portrait of the breakout star oh, Snow Lord. White was sent to the studio in reply to fan mail. We got, we got, you. Hey, 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 hey. Next up, we have an inter-office memo to Milk Hall, 1939. Walt sent this signed memo in warm recognition of Milk's contribution to the phenomenally popular and praised Snow White. Snow I'm White? sensing a theme. <laughs> Snow White. Next up is Walt Disney Studios Seasons Greetings card Snow from White. 1939. Snow White. And it, and it was signed by everybody. This is themed around Pinocchio. There's, there's the uh, signatures from everyone at the studio. And there are the signatures from Geppetto, <laughs> Figaro, and even the fish, Cleo signed the- uh, Pretty good penmanship for a fish. Okay, next up is Jiminy Cricket animation drawing by Ward Kimball, circa 1939. <laughs> Ben Alligator animation drawing by John Lounsbury from circa 1940 from Fantasia. Dinosaur animation drawing by Willie Reitherman, also circa 1940. Whoa. That doesn't look familiar to me. Oh my that's a segment from Fantasia oh. as well. Oh my 
We have Cinderella ball gown preliminary designs, circa 1948. Everything down in the corner actually has a little fine print that says facsimile. <laughs> so don't go trying to sell these on eBay as originals. <laughs> Hook, Hook, Hook! Yeah, Hook! <laughs> There's a Captain Hook animation drawing by Frank Thomas, circa 1952. We're going chronologically here. Next up is another fan card that they sent, if you sent them fan mail. This is uh, Peter Pan, 1953. Next up is the Disneyland Story Production Report from 1954. Ooh, now, what's the story behind this? I have no idea. It's just like boring office paper. I know. For Disney's groundbreaking entry into weekly television, Walt made sure animation was well represented by four of the nine, as indicated by the names on this in-house filming report. So I guess they all contributed. Going through Walt's uh, <laughs> file cabinets, I guess. I guess so. Uh, let's see, this is a script page for the Disneyland TV episode, Tricks of Our Trade, 1956. So, yeah, you can see what Walt would say. In this, re in this reenactment, we see four of our key animators engrossed in their assignment. A mommy! Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> 1958, this is the Art of Animation book spread. Walt commissioned this book written by journalist Bob Thomas, who later would write the first major biography of Walt to celebrate the animation staff. So that's like a... Like a spread that would appear. Alright, so we're back to we're back to artwork now. This is Pongo and Puppy animation art by Eric Larson, circa nineteen sixty. Ben, do you know what movie that's from? 101 Dalmatians. Just testing you. Mm. I had to test your Disney knowledge because oh. you know, knowledge of Disney is very important in a relationship. <laughs> Next up we have a Disneyland postcard. This is pretty cool. This is... A pirate's life for me. Disneyland showcase Mark Davis's <laughs> concept art. A brilliant combination of story, characterization, and design on postcards celebrating Pirates of the Caribbean. And there's the back of the postcard. I want that postcard. The Mike postcard. <laughs> Your postcard. Yeah. Next up we have... <laughs> hang on, here we go. We have Shere Khan. Shere Khan character sketch by Milt Call, circa 1967. Mommy, These are all reproduced on really nice paper. Yeah. Okay, next up we have the Aristocats promotional handbill from 1970. This promotional handbill from the initial release of the film shines a spotlight on the new cast of characters for the Aristocats. Okay, this is a Disney Studio photograph, <laughs> circa 1972. Let's see, with artwork from Robin Hood as a backdrop, the nine old men gathered for a rare group photo as the Disney company approached its 50th anniversary in 1973. Next up, we have Alice in Wonderland preview invitation from 1974. A new generation rediscovered Alice in Wonderland, especially at the sold-out screenings at the 1973 Walt Disney Productions 50th Anniversary Film Retrospective at Lincoln Center. This invitation invited fat cats of every stripe to preview during the film's first reissue mommy, in 1974. Mommy, mommy. And there's what the inside of the little invitation looks like. Cool. Next up is from 1977, Disney Animation Recruitment Brochure. As the nine old men began to retire, Disney sought to ensure the legacy of the art of animation by instituting Disney's animation training program using artwork from then-current projects. This brochure detailed the animation <laughs> process of the studio as well as how to submit a portfolio for consideration. So really you, were, you were born a couple years too, early, uh, too late, dear. <laughs> Maybe a couple decades. Yeah. Right? <laughs> mommy, mommy. Disney is looking for some colorful new characters, and there's some artwork of what they were working on at the time. Cool. Cool. Eric Larson's 50th anniversary pinback button from 1983 with a caricature drawn by legendary cool. Disney animator and director John Musker, one of the many oh, artists no, mentored no. by Eric Larson in Disney's animation training program. The button celebrated. Eric Larson's 50th year with Disney Animation. It's 
not a very flattering pin. <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, we have the Disney Legends Award Ceremony Program from 1989, where Disney celebrated the art of animation, the very foundation for every Disney success by inducting the nine old men along with Disney animator Ub Iwerks as Disney Legends. There's the Disney Legends Award that still hand out to this day. Mm -hmm. And in July, we'll see them handed out again, hopefully, if we make it into that presentation. Oh and at the bottom of the box is a little biography of the nine men who are celebrated in this box. So I guess that's going to wrap things up for today. It was fun trying out a unicorn frappuccino. And I'm sure it's going to disappear soon. So if you want to try one, I guess you only have a few hours left, maybe a couple days. I don't know how long it's going to be around. So that was fun. And I always love going through the... D23 membership kit every year. Get my new gold card. I'll be all ready for the expo. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap up today. See you tomorrow. Have a great one, guys. Bye.